Hello, welcome to Homegrown Florida. Today we are going to be doing something that I have been waiting two years to do, which is we are going to be making Roselle jam. In case you weren't aware, Roselle is a type of hibiscus uh, that we grow down here in Florida as a cranberry alternative. So it's a Roselle jam, but it's actually going to be kind of like a cranberry sauce. It's very tart, it has good sweetness, it's thick, it's awesome. So let's get a few of the things out that we need to be able to make this. All of these things you should probably already have in your kitchen. So let's get right into it. Roselle jam just has a few ingredients, first being the roselle flowers. Next, you're going to need some type of citrus, like an orange or a tangerine or something like that. And then a sweetener of your choice, whether that's maple syrup, sugar, or honey. All of them will work. We're going to be using the entire roselle flower today, minus the petals. So if you're not familiar with roselle, um, it flowers. And the part that we eat or the fruit that we eat is actually called the calyx. That is the bottom part of the flower and it contains two parts to it. The part that we eat is the red leathery part of the calyx. And then in the center of the calyx is the seed pod. The seed pod is not really edible, but the seed pod has a bunch of pectin in it. If you're not familiar, pectin is in lots of fruits like apples and strawberries. Um, but not all fruit has uh, pectin. And what pectin does is when you cook it at higher temperatures, it thickens. So instead of having this soupy, watery syrup, basically, you instead will have a nice, thick sauce. And pectin is what does that. So we're going to be using the entire part of the flour today. I'm going to be boiling the, the seed pods around or inside the calyx as a way to extract the pectin. And then we'll use that water to boil the calyx, the remaining part of the red leathery calyx in to make our cranberry sauce. So all we have to do is add the seed pods to a small pot and then we're gonna cover them with water. All you need is enough water for them to cover the pots. Usually roselle I plant in February or March. You can go a little bit later all the way to probably May or June. And then uh, it takes quite a while for these plants to grow. You want them to get nice and big and bushy. And then when the time starts to change and we start getting less daylight hours in fall, it will actually encourage the roselle to start flowering. And the flowering is what you want because that's what leads to the fruit. So now what we're going to do is we're going to boil these seed pods for about 20 to 30 minutes, get it up to a boil and then simmer. It's best to leave it covered while it's simmering so that that way it's not evaporating all the liquid. What we're really looking for with boiling these seed pods is for that pectin in the seed pods to transfer into the water and then use the water in our cranberry sauce. So let's let this simmer for a while. While our seed pods are simmering away, we are going to zest up this orange because we're going to use the zest and the juice. So as you can see, the pectin is releasing into the water, causing the water to become a little bit thicker. It's not going to be complete gel, but you're going to see a difference between a super watery and a slightly thickened 
liquid in your seed pod mix. Now what we're going to do is we're going to take a different pot or bowl, whichever you prefer, and we're going to put our orange juice into that bowl. Next up, we're going to add our orange zest. Then I'm going to put my roselle in. There's not exact measurements for this sauce, but you want the water to cover the roselle. We're going to take our seed pod mixture and we're going to strain it out. You only want the liquid to combine with the roselle. The seed pods are going to go into compost for us. From here, what you want to do is you want to measure how much roselle and liquid that you have. You can add more water here just to make sure that all the roselle is covered. Once you have it measured, you are going to want to add an equal amount of sweetener. So I'm using this mason jar to measure how much of the roselle mixture I have so that I know exactly how much sweetener to add. I'm using maple syrup today, but you can also use sugar or honey. Either one would work. Although I think that the sugar would probably give you an even, even thicker consistency than the maple syrup, which is liquid, <laughs> or honey, which of course would be liquid as well. Now we're going to get the roselle jam back onto the stove to simmer for about 20 minutes. You're really going to want to crank up the heat at first so that it really foams up at the top. And that, that increase in the heat is going to encourage that pectin to thicken. When we do this, we also want to take a small plate and spoon and stick it in the freezer. This is how we're going to test the gelling of our jam. When you've hit about the 15 minute point, you're going to want to start testing the jam's consistency. So we're going to grab our plate and our spoon out of the freezer and we're going to put just a small amount of the jam onto the, to the plate to see if it starts to gel. The cold temperature of the plate from being in the freezer is what is going to immediately cool down the jam. And that should be able to show you if that jam and that liquid has gotten thicker. And as you can see here, um, it is kind of beating off rather than just a straight liquid flowing off, which tells me that I've reached a gelling point for this jam. Now that the, we know that the jam has gelled properly, we're going to put it back in the mason jar and get it in the fridge. And you should know within a couple hours the, the final thickness of your jam. But go ahead and leave it overnight and check it in the morning. It's been several hours now that I've had the jam in the fridge, so let's test it out. We're going to look at the consistency, but we're also going to compare the flavor to a cranberry sauce that I made and canned last year. Let's do our taste test. So this is last year's cranberry sauce made with real cranberries, and this one is our Roselle gel. So let's take a look at the consistency first. So here's our cranberry sauce from last year that I canned. There's not much left because my husband adores cranberry sauce, but you can see how thick that is. That is whole jam right there. Our roselle is a little bit thinner than that. As you can see, it breaks apart and there is definitely a liquidiness to it. It's still really thick. If it's not as thick as you would like, you can always add actual commercial pectin, um, the kind that you buy at the store, the low sugar or the regular sugar even because it has quite a bit of sugar that we're adding to this. Um, but let's give it a taste. So we're going to start with the Roselle jam. That is good. That is really good. Mm. So it's very tart, but it's very sweet too. And it has an interesting texture. It's a little different than what you would expect from cranberry sauce. It's, it has like a chewier texture. Let's try this one. I want to see what the difference is. Okay, there is some differences. They're both good. I love cranberry sauce, so they're both good. The cranberry sauce is kind of mushy, which I think is what you expect from a cranberry sauce. It is tart and sweet, but the tartness of the roselle is much more apparent. It's more dramatic. And the texture, the texture is probably the biggest difference between these two. The cranberry sauce is, all I can describe it is, is like mushy. And the, the roselle is like chewy. It has, it has a, a defined texture. If your family is very much into that canned cranberry gel, you know, kind of 
pops out as a blog, uh, like a whole blob from the, from the can, they're probably not going to be too thrilled with the Roselle because of the immense amount of texture that it has. But if your family is very much into the whole cranberry sauce, that's really a jam with pieces of cranberry in it. I think that they might not even notice. I think the, the, the way that they might notice is probably with how tart it is. It is very tart. And maybe you can offset that with a little bit more sugar. If you're not really into tart, I'm really into tart. So for me, I absolutely love it. Um, the other thing I wanted to mention was it tastes different than fresh Roselle. So when I eat Roselle straight off of the plant, it really just tastes like lemon to me, very much like a citrus, like a lemon in an orange mix, like slightly sweeter lemon. So very tart, very lemony. But here, once mixed with the sugar and cooked with the pectin, it definitely gives off that cranberry vibe, very much so. So I hope you enjoyed today. Head down to the comments. Let me know what you think. Have you grown Roselle? Have you made Roselle jam? I'd love to hear your recipe.